In this video, we will learn about the uh, user defined functions in Scilab, how we can create our own functions in the Scilab. Now, whenever we have to write down the function, what we do is we start with this keyword function and then after that we write down the output variable equal to you can give any name to the function and then after that we have to pass the input argument. So this is how uh, the first line of the function looks like. The first word over here function is the keyword. This is the name of the function. User can give any name to the function. A and B are the inputs to the function. And whatever result will be computed based on the input values which are given, the value or the result is stored in the variable Y. Now let us define a simple function which will compute say any mathematical expression. I say that it computes this. So say I have uh, just uh, used a very simple function definition and the function definition has to be always terminated with another keyword which is the end function. So these three lines are nothing but these uh, are the basic function definition. Now if you wish to use this function, how this function is used, say if I give test and I wish to compute for the different values say 2 and 3 and then I have to display the value because I have stored the final answer in the variable C so I am using display C. So let us execute and see what do we get. So if I execute it, we see that we are getting the result. So 2 into 3 into 2 will give us 12. And this value Y is stored in the variable C. So it is not necessary that you have to use the uh, same variable which you have used in the function definition. So in the function definition start with the keyword keyword function then will come the output uh, variable. The output uh, or the return variable can be one or it can be more than one also. To begin with we have taken only one output variable. Then equal to symbol after the equal to symbol you have to give any name to the function which you want to. But try to give meaningful name to the function so that by looking at the name of the function, you are able to make out what this function uh, is meant for. And A and B are the input values for the function and the final answer will be stored in the variable Y. And so uh, this is uh, how the function definition looks and this is how a function can be used and function can be called as many number of times as it is required. So say again if I call the same function but say for different values I can call it again and then I can display the value of this. So suppose if I give it like this the output will, will be this. So uh, for two, three Input values, uh, the value, the answer is 12 and for 3, 4, the answer is 20. Now, uh, one more thing you can do is you can use uh, this uh, function you in the expressions also. Say if I use if I give something like this so I am storing this in the variable E 
and let us see what result do we get. So you see that here we have used this function in the expression and this is working fine. So this is regarding when the number of input uh, parameters are 2 but the output variable is 1. But it may happen sometimes you wish to return more than one values. So you can also write down a function where more than one values can also be returned. So let us now take another case where we will see how you can define a function which can return more than one values. So say I define new function and I call it to be test 2 and say the input variable I am taking as 1 you can take it to be more than 1 also it depends upon the requirement and over here in the definition I write down y1 as a star a and y2 as a star a star a and then I terminate this function with the keyword and sum. So I have defined a new function which has one input uh, variable but it will be returning two values y1 and y2. y1 is the square of a and y2 is the cube of a. And let us see if we use this function, how this function can be used. Now suppose I give uh, display test to 5. Okay. Let us see what do we get. So here we see that in the answer, only we are getting one value which is 25 but we were expecting two values so uh, it is returning only the square the first uh, uh, variable in the function definition it is returning so if you wish to display both the values this is not the right way to call the function how the function will be called say i want to store both the values say in the variables a and b respectively. So the value of y1 will be stored in the variable a and the value of y2 variable will be stored in the variable b. Say if I call it for again 5 and then I display a first and then Let us see what to do. Okay, there is an error. Why there is an error? Because I have used the wrong uh, function name over here. So let us execute it again. So over here you see that uh, the y1 value which is the square of a is stored in the variable a which is 25 and the cube of a is stored in the variable b. So this is how you have to call the function if the function is returning more than one value. Now let us define a new function where the function Now let us define a new function where in the function the input variable will not be a single value but it will be a vector instead and let us see how uh, the return variable will be computed and how it will be displayed so i am taking a simple function uh, say to star a dot star a. So this is the function definition where this will be computing two 
a square over here and uh, in the main program say the value of a is not a single value but it is a vector so if the input argument is a vector let us see how this function works and i display the set and execute it let us see what it is so you see that in the result i am getting three values why we are get, i am getting three values over here because the a was a vector and that and it had three values over here so for each value of a in the vector the y is computed and this value is returned and stored in the variable z over here so if the input argument is a vector then the return variable y will also become a vector and the size of the y vector the return variable it will be same as the input vector so over here if for multiple values of the input argument the function has to be computed it is not necessary that you have to use the for loop instead what you can do is you can use the vector concept pass the vector as the input parameter and then the return variable will also become a vector so this is something very powerful uh, which is very commonly used in the complex problems and you can avoid the usage of the for loop now let us take another example say if you have to compute this for a uh, say 100 number of uh, values say 1 0.12 say i take as 1.8 you can pass the vector in this form also so if i call this as z1 equal to test of a and then if i display z1 now we will see that z1 will be again a vector and the size of the vector will be the same as the uh, vector a so let us execute it and we see that now we are getting uh, multiple values over here depending upon how many values a has so this is something very interesting and very powerful and uh, in the next video we will see how this function such kind of functions can be used if you have to plot a complex uh, say legendre polynomials or the bessel's functions so we'll be making use of this property where the input parameter will be your uh, array and it will not, not be a single value so in the next video uh, we'll come up with the plotting of the legendre polynomial and the bessel's function Thank you.